I think Howie would like an upgrade, but here's where I would be cautious. Roquan Smith, I know why he's crying. <laughs> he got, he's left by himself. Let me get to John McMullen, who's been at Eagle Camp. And John, I want to get your your thoughts on that first. We you know before we get to production on on uh, Robert Quinn, just your overall sense of what the move means in your opinion for um, for the Eagles getting Robert Quinn. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's the classic uh, um, low risk high reward uh, move. Uh, obviously, he's not having a, a good season this year, but he's you know, one year removed from 18 and a half sacks. He's, uh, you know, I heard you mention you, you probably gave that Bears defensive front a little bit too much credit. It might be the worst in football. Um, and he's getting double teamed all the time. He, he gets double teamed more than Micah Parsons because they have nothing else. So you show up to play Chicago, and this is a long way away from Khalil Mack and Akeem Hicks. And, you know, when they were great, um, you know, they're – bottom feeding on the defensive line right now. Um, so people show up and they say, well, all right, let's double team Robert Quinn. And he's not equipped to beat double teams uh, at this stage of his career. I don't know if he ever was, but I, I will tell you this, he's never going to see a double team in Philadelphia. So all of a sudden, you know, you got this guy with the tremendous bend around the edge and, 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 you know, he's going to be a rotational player and they're going to come at you in waves. Um, it looks good on paper. We'll see how it shakes out. I mean, this is, you know, the championship window is open. So I talked about this with Jody this morning on Birds 365. I don't give a rat's ass about a fourth round pick in 2023 if I'm the Eagles. I mean, th this, this thing is there for him. So, you know, why not take a risk on, on Robert Quinn? Does he play this week, anything, John? Uh, you know, Brandon thinks he's going to play. He was out there. He passed his physical. He was out of practice. If there's, you know, if you think about who can play in, 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 in an NFL game quickly, you know, running back maybe, you give him a couple carries and edge rusher, pin him back, go get the quarterback. Um that's one of the positions. So uh, I could see him being out there with a package of plays. You saw how quickly San Francisco got Christian McCaffrey on the field, and he's a veteran player, very smart player. Robert Quinn's a veteran player, very smart player. I, I don't see any reason why he shouldn't be able to be out there for a limited – you know, I wouldn't expect to see a lot of them. Uh, but a, a limited – you know, if you look at – how they were using Patrick Johnson as the fourth uh, edge rusher. There's no reason you can't throw Robert Quinn out there for 10, 15 plays. John, there's been a lot of conversation around the league as we get closer to November 1st here. And, you know, yesterday we brought up Rokon Smith. We also brought up Robert Quinn right at the top of the program. That trade happened during our show yesterday. But in the process of talking to Jay Glazer, and talking to Adam Schefter yesterday, <clears throat> the Eagles had contacted Carolina, not just for Brian Burns, but they had contacted for Christian McCaffrey. So it's not so much that they didn't land. I mean, obviously, um, part of the thing that stopped that deal with McCaffrey not going to the Eagles was they didn't want one of those twos from 2024. They want immediate impact, obviously, for the new head coach coming into the building there. So that wasn't going to work for them. Could you see them still, though, going into the market looking for Kareem Hunt? I mean, right now, um, what Andrew Berry's saying and what people around the league are saying is that 2023, a third rounder and a fifth rounder could possibly get you Kareem Hunt. Or would you hold out for a potential guy like um, Alvin Kamara, who is making a lot of noise down in New Orleans right now, looking like he may be moved? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Howie, you know, it it kind of amuses. Look, he's calling about everybody. So yeah, that's right. Know, when, when he's notorious for that, John. Yeah, he calls literally, everyone. Literally, will call about everybody. Yeah, he wasn't serious about Christian McCaffrey, and I I can tell you that because he offered a third round pick. Well, Howie knows he's getting a second round. They're getting a second round pick, a third round pick, a fourth round pick. But he's not even in the ballpark. So that I called it a non-offer offer. 
Uh, he likes to keep abreast on on the market as a whole. So whenever you see these reports, it could be from anybody, uh, from Adam Schefter on down, they'll put dot, 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 and the Eagles. Because the Eagles are making the call. They're yeah. making the call. They're doing right. the due diligence. So it doesn't necessarily mean that much. Brian Burns, look, two first-round picks. They're not giving up two first-round picks uh, for Brian Burns. Uh, good player. Um, but, you know, that, that's just Caroline is – smartly you know if somebody meets that they'll think about it if they don't meet it they're not going to think about it and the eagles are able to get an accomplished pass rusher as we said for a fourth round pick and a fourth round pick by the way in chicago's paying essentially the whole salary they're paying the veteran minimum so they don't even have to pay for it chicago's paying essentially for robert quinn to play for the eagles um so that's the reason they went in that direction as far as adding more people, it's pretty clear to me that Nick Sirianni really likes Miles Sanders, uh, who's having a good season. But he's not hes not a well-rounded running back. He doesn't catch the, the football out of the backfield. He's not the best pass protector in the world. I think Howie would like an upgrade. But here's where I would be cautious. It, it, with Jalen Hurts... You're not dumping the football off. So if, if you think about it, everybody says you need a, a receiver in the backfield. The Eagles were hoping Kenny Gainwell would, would step forward. You know, you mentioned Alvin Kamara's great coming out of the backfield as a receiver. All right, but Jalen doesn't do that. And he doesn't do that because he's going to run the football. And I'd rather run it for 15 yards off schedule with Jalen Hurts than dump it off to a back that's going to get 10 yards or or, or, you know, everybody understands the outlet receiver part of it. Um, so I'm not sure the Eagles need that. But I, I do think Howie Roseman would like another running back next to Miles Sanders because it, it really it's got more to do with Kenny Gainwell and Boston Scott than Miles Sanders. They don't like their depth at running back. They don't like their depth at safety. So if they're going to do something else, it's probably going to be at those two positions. But here's the problem, Dan. They've already they've already given up their fourth, their fifth, and their sixth next year. So, you know, you got to be real cautious, uh, obviously, with first-round picks. But even second and third-round picks, and then they go down to the seventh round. So they got a big donut hole in the middle of next year's draft now because they've used all that, that capital. So that could make things a little bit uh, more difficult. Now, player for player, Andre Dillard's still there. You know, does somebody want Andre Dillard? Could you work a, a player for player trade? That, that would be a possibility. John, how about this? There's 14 free agents on this team next year. Your two tackles potentially – you're going to bail on because there's $30 million there. Your back end, your back four now. Let's look at it this way, John. CJ's not going to want to be paid as a safety. He's going to be want to be paid as a corner. You've got Bradbury who's playing top flight football. You've got another guy on the other side making $15 million. Are you really going to put $50 million in three guys? That's what it's going to cost you to bring those guys back this year. Again, you're able to move, John, the money. Where I'm going with this is – this could be a completely different looking team next year because of all these one year deals. Kaiser White's on a one year deal. TJ Edwards' deal's up. Yeah. I mean, your two tackles are up. You're going to be able to move that tackle money because, look, you're hoping Jordan Davis steps in. You can get away with Milton Williams. You have both of those guys, that money go over to the back end. Howie's really got a lot of work to do here in this coming offseason because, <clears throat> John, as you know, with success, people are wanting to get paid with that. I mean, yeah, you know, and you don't you know, have you the want to run it back, but people want to get money for it, especially if you're on a one year deal. How do you think this thing is shaping up for, you know, people talking about dynasty? And I'm like, wait a minute, man, you got a ton of free agents coming up this year. Yeah, the whole defense is basically you got to make a decision on literally almost everybody. Um, yeah. Um, and it's difficult, you know, how he's famous for 
getting these team friendly extensions done early. Like he'd like to get TJ done early. He'd like to get uh, Marcus Epps done early. I imagine. Um, and you know, it's a six and O team, <laughs> you know, you, you, the, that's not the time to negotiate. Uh, unfortunately <laughs> it's, it, it's like, it, it's bad for a GM. It's good for everybody else, but it's bad for a GM. Cause you're not getting the, the full discount. If you're having a normal season, like last year, they were a good team. They made the playoffs. They're able to get Jordan Mylot extended team friendly deal. They're able to get uh, Avante Maddox, Dallas Goddard, Josh Sweat done. All those players done. Good team. Now, if that happened this year, you can imagine what Jordan Mylotta would cost. Oh, jeez. Um, it, it, it's 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 difficult. Um, and there's certain guys that are going to bet on themselves. Um, but, you know, I, I think the Eagles are set up. You mentioned Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave. I think they're going to make a decision on one. They'll bring one back. They won't bring the other. Uh, and as you mentioned, that depth with Jordan Davis and Milton Williams. A- edge rusher, you know, you got to you, – you, you have Josh Sweat. He's one of the few guys you have under contract. Uh, Brandon wants to play 50. Brandon's playing great, by the way. Yeah. Um, it, you know – He'll be willing to come back on sort of a team discount. Then Bradbury is the most interesting one to me um, because he's playing at a Pro Bowl level. Um, he was forced to take the pay cut this year, but he's also got a little age on him. And I don't think a lot of people look at James Bradbury and say, that's a shutdown corner. That's a great second corner but not a lot of teams have the first corner of Darius Slay. So that's going to be interesting. That's going to be one to uh, see how many teams want to go down the James Bradbury route. Um, and that could be a difficult one. Look, Kaiser White's a good player, but you got N'Kobe Dean um, ready to step in. And you mentioned CJ. I mean, he can, he can say all he wants, what he wants to be paid like. He's going to be paid like a safety because he's playing safety. So – you know, and what he's about a good Miles player, Sanders? but he's not a great player. What about Miles Sanders, John? I mean, he's on pace for 1,400 yards. He looks like he's really, you know, having himself a great year. <laughs> now, he's one-dimensional. Now, even though – and, you know, I say that with respect to his first year where he had a boatload of catches his first year, and for whatever reason, they got away from that or he did or what happened. But um, do you, you think they're letting him walk out the building? I mean – you're talking about a guy that if he has 1,400 yards, you're going to look at a $5 million number here, $5, 6000000 million number. You're not going to pay him $11 million what the tag is or 14 whatever the tag is. No, they're not paying they're not a doing running that. back. Um, Does he walk just, out the building? I mean, you know, I how many teams are going to pay running backs that kind of money? Um, Christian McCaffrey, I, I'm talking top of the line. No you way. Have Christian, you have Derrick Henry, you have Zeke back in the day, you have Dalvin Cook. I don't These think he has a market. No, he's not going to have that. That's what I'm saying. He's not going to have that type of market. Uh, the question is how high he's playing very well. Um, if, if, if he gets uh, a big deal um, elsewhere, yeah, they're going to let him walk. I mean, they just don't believe in paying that position top of the market uh, value. And they don't have it, Derek. I mean, Miles Sanders, as you said, he's having a great year uh, from a rushing standpoint in his walk year. But he's not Derek Henry. Everybody knows he's not Derek Henry. He's not Dalvin Cook, never mind Derek Henry. He's not Christian McCaffrey when he's healthy. He's not Nick Chubb. He's not that type of running back. Um, so it, it kind of depends on the market. And if, if the Eagles can get them at a cost effective rate, Nick Sirianni loves them, but I get the feeling that how he doesn't love them as much as Nick does. Now he did when he was a rookie, as you mentioned, but I think he's kind of soured a little bit on Moss. And that's why you hear all these rumors about Kamara and Hunt. I, I mean, there's a reason for that. Two last questions for you. All right, John, at the end of the year, the collective bargaining agreement allows you to start a conversation with your quarterback. Um, yeah, and that's a big part of it as well. Because It is, because do you, believe, do you believe right now, John, that they're willing to pay Jalen Hurts $45 million a year over three <clears throat> years? Um, year? 
you know, I, I don't know the number. I can tell you if I'm Nicole Lynn and that's Jalen's agent. Um, Clutch know, sports. If, 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 if things go the way they're going, like my, my I started Kyler Murray money. That's where I start. Like I'm not 46 I'm not, one. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm not taking a penny less. It, it, you know, how he has this way of convincing players that, look, we gave you the opportunity to give us a little bit of a discount so we can build up around you, continue having the success. That's going to be his argument. But what the Eagles know, they're paying him a boatload of money. If he continues to play at this level, if the if the floor doesn't fall out, and I don't think it will, yeah, they know they're going to extend him. He's getting a boatload of money, and that factors into every decision as well because – Look, the history is clear in this league. Russell Wilson in Seattle um, is the you know probably the best recent example. The Seahawks won the Super Bowl, almost won another, should have won another when he was on his rookie deal. Then they had to pay him, uh, and then the attrition starts on the back end of the roster. Same thing happening with the Eagles right now. They're paying the quarterback a million dollars. I know they they have one of the best rosters in this league. Well, when they have to pay the quarterback, and that's coming, they'll have one more year because you can structure it that you can start the extension in, in 2024. But when it comes, you got to build a different way. And then the draft picks become more important. That's exactly where I'm going on the final question here. Once he signs that deal or that extension, John, is that the end of A.J. Brown? Because we've seen this too, John. Very seldom do you keep a $45 million, $46 million quarterback and a $25 million wideout. You can look at the examples around the league. Kansas City got rid of Hill. Green Bay got rid of Devontae Adams. The restructuring Cooper Cup took less money. So did Stafford to keep those two in the building in Los Angeles. I mean, you can't keep them all, John. Yeah, man, I, I think from that standpoint, it's more likely Devontae would be the guy uh, yeah. on his second deal because, you know, Jalen and AJ are so close. The question is, you you can't pay. You can pay one, especially with the explosion in salary cap. You can't pay two um, elite receivers. And remember, they have the tight end as well, who they've already paid, Dallas Goddard. Um. So I would think it would be Devontae more likely not getting the second contract than AJ for two reasons. One, AJ's better, um, and he's closer to the Jalen Hurts, but that's for down the road. Right now, you got to take advantage, um, and you know that's why Robert Quinn is here. You got it. You got to seize the moment. When you, you know, and, moment. And John, your point, real quick here. That's how the Patriots built that dynasty, and that's how Seattle built that defense because he, Russell Wilson was on a, a third round contract. Yeah, and remember, do you remember this, uh, John? Tavares Jackson was making more money than <laughs> Russell Wilson for two years out in Seattle, and Brady, Brady was making a million bucks, the like the league minimum for like two years as they built that roster around him. And I think that's, like you said, one of the reasons why they've built this team the way they have because the kids out playing everybody in the division, especially in the conference as well. John, great stuff as always, man. Don't forget, folks, Birds 365 each and every single morning with him and Jody. It is a great show. Um, those guys do a spectacular job. Thank you so much, John, for joining us. I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. You got it.